God bless everybody. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, happy Feast of Tabernacles. And, um, you know, you guys, uh, if, if you get um, part of learning and, and growing in Christ and walking with the Lord is, um, is looking at correction, right? And like, say, for instance, I, I um, have uh, brothers and sisters around me that when I'm doing something wrong or in error, they, uh, they correct me. And I accept that correction because I love truth. I love truth. And I love truth above, uh, 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 I don't try to preserve my own pride or my own ways or, or I'm not interested in or in the glory of man or anything like that. I want to walk with the Lord. I want to be obedient to Him. I want to be pleasing unto Him. And so um, if you don't like, um, if you're the type of person where if people are having a, um, uh, like, uh, there's there's difference, you guys, between arguing. See, it's, it gets bad, you guys, when, they, uh, when one of the parties or both of the parties are mad. And, and they start operating not out of love, okay? But I am doing this out of complete love and to share the truth and to share what God says. So I love you guys. And, um, and with that being said, we'll just get right into this. This is about the Feast of Tabernacles and, and what the Lord says about it, okay? Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ said, Do not think I have come to abolish... Oh, Sorry. Do not do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And you guys, if you're confused about something um, that I'm saying or that somebody else is saying, I would encourage you guys. I really would. Um, when you ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you, you will get exactly that. The only thing that can block that is your own is if you don't believe it or if you're practicing some sort of rebellion or witchcraft will will, will distort your perception right but ask the lord to guide your right hand with the power of the holy spirit if i'm right or if what the other person is trying to convince you of but this is all going to be scripture i'm not going to um, give my opinion or anything like that. We're, we're just going to look at what the Lord says. So the Lord says, Do not think I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill them. Okay? Now, in the book of Zechariah, um, chapter 14, it says, and it's talking about the thousand-year reign, right? Because the meek are going to inherit the earth, right? Right? the spirits and the souls of all of God's people are going to be brought in around the throne of the Lord in the heavens, and they are going to um, inherit the earth and rule and reign with Christ, which is the anointing for, um, for a thousand years. Sorry about these advertisements on the side, you guys. Um, but it says that in that thousand year period, everyone that is left of all the nations, because there's not going to be um, as, as big of a percentage of people here left on the, on the world as there is now, right? Because we all know what happens during the tribulations. Which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So this is going to be something that is going to be um, celebrated and observed throughout the thousand year period and um and it and the lord says and it shall be that whoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto jerusalem to worship the lord and lord of king of kings there shall no rain be upon them so it, it will actually curse them by not observing this um feast and what this is you guys the tabernacle um is is not a symbol of of you the tabernacle is the symbol of god's protection of his provision of his protection and provision and um uh, that is what the tabernacle symbolizes and that we abide in that protection how do we abide in that 
by being obedient to him, by being obedient to the Lord God Almighty, by being obedient to the Lord God Almighty in the flesh, Jesus Christ, who taught us the way of life everlasting, right? And so people, the Lord said he will smite the heathen that come up and not keep the feast of tabernacles, okay? So this is not going to be um, really optional. Well, it is going to be optional, but if you do, you are going to get, um, you, bad things are going to happen to you if you do not observe this, right? And Timothy uh, 3.16, you guys, says all scripture, all scripture, that means all the from Genesis all the way to Revelation, is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Hold on just a second, you guys. So you guys, in, in the starting now, starting um, as the children of God are being made manifest and the kingdom of Christ is growing more and more and it is being made manifest on the earth, what we're going to see in this thousand year period is the old, the law, and the new coming together as one, the way that the Lord intended it, right? It's not that it's getting done away with, you guys, that's, that is not that when anybody says that that's not in the bible nor has it ever been in the bible what the lord jesus christ did was supersede it he he um what he did is when we follow him and the spirit of christ changes us it puts our heart in the right um the way that the lord desire where our lord desires our hearts to be at See, the the Jews, they thought, and by doing this stuff, it made them righteous, but they didn't look at their heart, right? They physically circumcised, but they didn't circumcise their heart, right? And that was the whole thing that they missed, right? But this is chapter 23 in Leviticus. And, um, hold on, Jim. So in Leviticus 23, it says, Speak unto the children and say unto them concerning the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. So these are feasts of the Lord, you guys. These aren't the days of men or extra, you know, days that man has made up. These are the Lord's feasts. So these are feasts unto the Lord, you guys. These aren't man-made um, days. You know, these are commands that the Lord God Almighty gave us. And so, guys, I encourage you to read, pray, and ask the Lord to guide you and reveal His truth to you. And read, um, read all of Leviticus 23. Um, but now let's get into what it talks about, Feast of Tabernacles. So, when you get down to here... You know, you guys don't don't listen to man. Listen to the Lord, okay? And Colossians two, you guys, um, if you when you correctly divide the word and what we uh, how we are supposed to treat um, the word and correctly dividing it, we have to look at who Paul was talking to and what was exactly going on, okay? Paul was not talking about the Lord's feast days, holy convocations, you guys, okay, Paul was not talking about that, and, and to let, to make sure that everybody knows, you guys, our, the Lord Jesus Christ says, pick up your cross and follow me, you guys, the Lord says that, okay, um, when, when Jesus, Jesus kept, our Lord kept all of the feast days and everything, we need to do um, and, and all of our brothers and sisters, you guys, Peter, Paul, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all of those people, they all kept the holy feast days, you guys, and the Sabbath. Just because, um, Jesus died on a cross for us does not mean that we are not commanded and called to do, to, to keep these days. And you guys, if, if you think that you're wrong, please, you guys, for for your benefit, for your benefit, right? Because you guys, the the world, we are going to soon soon see those who are in um, who are who are 
being pleasing to the Lord. People who do not listen to the Lord um, from here on out, you guys, it's going to be very distinguishable. It's going to be distinguishable. They're going to be opened up to a lot of other things, right? That, trust me, you guys, you just, just pray and ask the Lord. Um, and in that, you guys, me showing you the word, this should be good enough. But if you're still having doubt, then pray and ask God to reveal that to you. Hold on just a second. So this is what the Lord God says. It says, say to the children of Israel, the first for 15th day of the seventh month shall be a feast of tabernacles for seven days. On the first day shall be a holy convocation and you shall do no servile work. So you guys, this is a day that we ought, that we give to the Lord and give thanks and give him glory in these days. Give him, bring, uh, give him thanks and praises. And we should want to do these things. If you have a good, thankful, grateful heart, you will want to do these things. Okay, and then it says, during the seven days, um, you shall give offerings made by fire. Now, you guys, this back then, remember, the law is spiritual. And so uh, it's not talking about literally getting an animal and putting it in the fire. It's talking about like when I prayed to the Lord about this, what he showed me is that it's the sufferings that we go through as as followers, a children of God, how we suffer and um, many things that when we suffer it for and and we still and we don't retaliate we do it with a still loving heart and we don't let it allow to pervert or distort um, um, our love for people then that is that is like that can be like an offering made by fire okay so it's not talking about literal remember it says in Romans the law is spiritual Okay. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire. So, you guys, we need to be, you, you know, in the Bible, in um, the gospel, it says we need to present our bodies as living sacrifices, right? You guys, the world is going to mow us over for who we are. There's a reason for that. This gives glory. That is a way in which we give glory to God. And when we respond in a way that's still loving and we don't retaliate out of our flesh, that overthrows and shows Satan that he does not have power over us because he's banking that you will respond to these things in your flesh, that you will retaliate, right? Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. That's not the way the Lord calls us to, okay? And on the eighth day is also going to be a Sabbath. So next Saturday is also going to be a Sabbath where we're not supposed to work. Okay. And you shall uh, take on the first day bows of goodly trees, branches of palms, and bows of thick trees. Now, you guys, I I literally did this, you know, in, in my tabernacle. And I got a little bundle of them. And I was giving the Lord praises and, and giving him thanksgivings. Right. And um, the other one. I wanted to show you, okay, was, and you shall dwell in booths, you know, so you can make you guys a little tent or set up a little tabernacle in some way. It could be something that's already around, you know, and, and we are called to dwell in that. So when the Lord tells us to do these things, you guys, and remember in the book of Zechariah 14, People who don't do this in the thousand year reign, there's going to be a curse upon it. You guys, that just shows that shows that there's uh, that is very rebellious, right? And so, um, the reason that we do these things, you guys, is a sign, it's a sign in the physical of our faith and our obedience to the Lord God Almighty. And people who tell you not to do what the word of the Lord says, you guys. Um, I, when I, what I would do is I'd ask the Lord to guide your hand with the power of the Holy Spirit and ask them what he believes about them and, and what they're saying, because you guys, you don't want to listen to the thing, something that man says, listen to what the scriptures say. All right. I love you guys so much. God bless. And, uh, Lord willing, I'll see y'all on the next one.